Hello, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville Hockey Podcast. We cover everything Admirals, Pirates, and Florida Everglades related. I'm Daniel Goodwill, and this is Christopher Draves. Yo, what's up? Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, you can visit them at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. You can get all your hockey needs. You can get your referee gear. You can get your uh, skate sharpened if you're a figure skater, speed skater, or just skating for fun. You can get NHL jerseys from all teams in the Midwest. You can get Milwaukee Admiral jerseys like the one I'm currently wearing. Oh, and you can also get jerseys customized. If you stop into the store, tell them that we said um, that we sent you. All right. That's if you stop it. Um, up first. The beating in Nashville. Not a good beating, but it's a beating. Put the vape down. It's not worth it, man. It's making me want to smoke. All right, anyways, uh, the Penguins uh, basically Maui whopped the Predators uh, 5 to 2. Yes, and that, I'm not refer. We're not going to refer to the Predators as the um, goaltenders because in this case, it's not their fault. It's not the goalie's fault. It's their defense. Their defense has been god awful. I've been criticizing their defense since last season. It's still not better. All right, uh, shots on goal were uh, 32-25 Predators. Uh, Face-off percentage was uh, 60% for the uh, Predators, 40% for the Penguins. Both teams were 0 for on the power play. Pittsburgh was 0 for 1, Nashville was 0 for 2. Uh, penalty minutes were 18 for the Predators, 10 for the Penguins. Uh, hits were 20 for Nashville, 9 for Pittsburgh. Blocks were 15 for Pittsburgh, 11 for Nashville. And giveaways were 12 for the Penguins and only 9 giveaways for the Predators. Yeah, seriously, their defense has to improve. Like, now. Alright, so scoring in the first 2 minutes and 17 seconds in was Dominic Simone. Uh, he scored his third with an assist from Ricola, his second. And Chad Ruedel, his third. Then Craig Smith scored again. With an assist from Ekholm, his 16th, Smith's 6th. Then the Milwaukee-born hockey player, Alex Golchenyuk, scored his third. With an assist from... Wait, he was born in Milwaukee? Yes. Oh. Um, with an assist from Pedersen, his 13th, and Marino, his uh, 12th. Why well, do I feel like I'm talking about the Dolphins in the 90s? Pedersen, Pedersen. Is that Elias? No. That ain't emo, is it? Nope. Any relation? Nope. Okay. And then Teddy Bluger scored his fifth with an assist from Aston Race, his sixth, and Tanev, his eleventh. Tanev left the game with an injury after that. And then uh, Brian Russ scored his fourteenth. What are you guys about? With an assist from Gensel and Malkin. Gensel's twentieth, Malkin's twenty-third. Then uh, Yuso Ricola scored his first of the year with an assist from Kuhn, his twelfth. And McCann, his 12th line. I feel like I'm talking now about the Braves. <sighs> Quit making references. Um, and then in the third, it was Victor Arvidsson with his 8th with an assist from Yo Roman Yossi, his 22nd, and Grimaldi, his 12th. Wow, Grimaldi actually got on the point sheet after he got robbed of a goal earlier. Yeah. Honestly, it should have been Grimaldi's goal in the first period, but yeah. The one they gave to Smith. But hey, it is what it is. Their defense still uh, made the goalies look bad. Um, Go for it. Um, Tristan Yari was in net for Pittsburgh. He is their better goaltender right now. He stopped 30 of 32 with a .938 save percentage. Yeah, he played like an uh, all-star goaltender. I'm not going to get into the plus minus because I'll be listing almost everyone except for Yossi, Ham Hughes, yeah, right. Johansson, yeah, I already looked Watson, the, and Sissons. Yeah, I already looked at the plus minus list before we started filming. Yeah, uh, Pecorino stopped three of six. He left the game in the first period with an apparent groin injury. But from what we're guessing, 
Maybe just tweaked it. Yeah. They didn't want to risk it, I'm guessing. From what I'm gathering, I think it's personally, it had nothing to do with that. They yanked him because he was, it was not his night. That seems to be a building trend right now. He is at the back half of his career, so. Um, and then Saro stopped 17 of 19 with a .895 save percentage. Can't really blame Saros for the goal scored on him, just like, oh, except all but one, you can't blame Pekka for, so all but one. So, literally, literally it should be 2-1 sitting the other way. Yeah, it should have been. Should've Our referees been. were Brian uh, Pugmara. And Gord Dwyer, uh, linesmen were Pierre Ricotte and Matt McPheeson. Uh, head coach for Pittsburgh is Mike Sullivan. Uh, head coach for Nashville is Tito Aviolette. Uh, scratches for Pittsburgh was Justin Schultz, former Badger. Um, Kevin Kuzman and Thomas DePauli. Um, scratches for Nashville were Yannick Weber, Jared Chinorty, and Colin Blackwell. And that was that game. Oh, three stars of the game would be helpful. Drop probably Penguins. I'm guessing Malkin. And uh, three stars of the game was third star was Tristan Yari. Teddy Bluger was second star, and Yusko Ricola was first star. Oh, I was I was completely off. All of them were pit. So you wanna you wanna vent about the uh, issues in Nashville right now? Want to get something off your chest? If you keep letting guys just stand in front of your goalie and whack away at the puck and don't put them on their ass, and I don't care that I swore. Ass and a swear word, they say it on the radio, it's fine. If you don't do it, you're going to lose every night because they're going to get rebound goals. Yeah. You gotta play physical on defense. I agree. Especially if they're hacking away at you. And, and, and I hate that I'm quoting him, but Snoop Dogg said it best about hockey. It is like football on skates. Oh, Snoop. Yeah. He actually said that. Yeah. I find it funny Snoop Dogg's taking an interest in hockey. Actually, I'm not against it. I just find it kind of weird because it's like totally out of the blue. Like, what led to it? Actually, he's been a fan of the L.A. Kings since uh, Wayne Gretzky came there. A lot of L.A. Kings fans have been a fan of the Kings since Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> so, Seriously, if you talk to a Kings fan, they'll obviously say, yeah, I've been a fan since Gretzky. Because before Gretzky, the Kings were like a joke. Yeah, so he, he said he was listening to game, uh, he would listen to, to Kings games because they had the same radio broadcaster at the time as the Lakers, Lakers did. Out about, I was about to say probably the Lakers, or the Clippers for that matter. And he said that he liked, preferred him talking about hockey because he was so an, being able to be so animated and that he was better at, at hockey than he was I've at I've heard him call hockey. I've heard it because uh, I forget what game it was. It wasn't with the Kings, but it was like two teams and they decided to let Snoop Dogg sit in the booth and do some commentary. Yeah, and... and Wasn't that during the All-Star game? Yeah. And so here's the thing. Snoop Dogg is in NHL 20. Yeah. He, 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 he's he, not... He's just like you. He wants the more aggressive. He likes that aggressive style. Yeah, if... if and our he, defense is playing weak. Hey, you're venting and I'm venting too. We're just playing crappy defense right now. Really. But uh, here's the thing. If you don't play physical in this... In this game, you're not gonna win. And you think you're gonna be able to let win a win a Stanley Cup not being physical? You you're out you're out you're out your mind. Yeah. Cause I'm sorry, that's probably why they lost it in the first place in 2017. I don't even remember. It's been so many playoff disappointments ago. I'm sorry. It is what it is, dude. Their defense has been bad. They're a good scoring team, but when it comes to playing defense and helping the goalies and, you know, having a team effort to keep the puck out of the net, Nashville just don't get the job done. Whoever's in charge of their defense, I think he's the issue. I don't think it's Laviolette. I think you got to get rid of the defensive coach. So what say you? 
Uh, McCarthy. Fire McCarthy. Fire the whole coaching staff for all I care. Try firing one coach just to see if it'll shake things up a bit. Because we've narrowed it down. McCarthy was the uh, power play coach last year. Their power play sucked last year. It improved this year with a new coach. McCarthy takes over the defense this year. This year, the defense stays the same as it did last year. So, McCarthy, you didn't improve it. You just made it stay the same. Or, actually, you made it worse. Well, you need to to go with it. Maybe Lavulette's job could be spared if they fire McCarthy instead. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it. If they if they don't do something, do you think they would do that type of a coaching change mid season or is that a post season move like a lobby light fire? I would think that would be a post season move. You don't want to shake the roster too much. So our coaching changes at this point, you feel like they'd be post season and not mid season. Yeah, like because if they miss the post season, then everybody's gone anyway. Yeah, off of your heads. And to be honest. I don't see a problem. As far as the way they play otherwise, offensively, they're fine. Yeah. It's just... Defensively. You can't generate offense without playing defense. And here's the thing. When they play defense, they're great. Yeah. But nine times out of ten, that's when Lafayette takes over the defense. My personal opinion, I don't think they need a defensive coach. I think the head coach needs to step up and do his job. No. So McCarthy and Laviolette need to pull their heads out of their butts. Okay. So up to our next game. The happy game. Or happy games. Alrighty then. Oh, uh, FYI, uh, tomorrow, Late 7 show. o'clock p.m. at the UW Panther Arena, Admirals versus the Grand Rapids Griffins again. So I will not be doing a preview tonight. Also, tomorrow at the Pittsburgh uh, Arena, what is that, the PNC or PPG Paint Center in Pittsburgh, it's uh, Predators and Penguins tomorrow night. I find that we... It's at 6 o'clock, not 7. Huh? It's at 6, not 7. Oh, 6 o'clock at the Panther Arena for the Admirals and Grand Rapids. But I find that where the Admirals play Grand Rapids back-to-back nights, and then the Penguins and Predators play each other back-to-back nights. But yeah, no previews coming out of us tonight. But uh, anyways, yeah, the Admirals get the victory in another shutout. Uh, 3-0 over to Grand Rapids Griffins. Um, this one was kind of a weird thing because they were giving Grossnick the credit for the victory, but Ingram was in that because Grossnick got hurt. Correct. Yes. Um, with I that, explain that before I go into the stats. Actually, could you go into the shots first, then I can do a better explanation. Because uh, the statistics, as far as the shots on goal and stuff like that, the penalties, all that, they all lead into that. All right. Well, shots on goal in the first period was a uh, 15-14 Grand Rapids. Then second period shots were even at 10 apiece. Uh, and then third period, uh, Grand Rapids out, outshot Milwaukee 9 to 7. Uh, they outshot us 34 31. Uh, power play, uh, Milwaukee was 1 for 4 on the power play. Grand Rapids was 0 for 3. Uh, for penalty minutes, Milwaukee had 25 penalty minutes on 8 infractions. Grand Rapids, 37 penalty minutes on 10 infractions. All right, so I'm going to get into that. First yeah. off, Giovanni Smith got a penalty for uh, abuse of an official, which normally results in a suspension. Also, Evgeny Svechnikov, uh, goaltender interference, which is what caused Grosnick to become injured. Um, Grosnick stopped 21 to 20, 21, and Ingram stopped 13 to 13. So because Grosnick had more shots, more, uh, more ice time, which was 37 minutes and 20. Wait, had more ice time? Yeah. When did Grosnick get pulled? I thought he got pulled towards the first. He got pulled it towards the end of the second. Are you sure? Because I could have swore he got pulled. Well, remember when you walked in the door, the game was already two minutes in. Only two minutes? Yeah. I swear to God, he got pulled like eight minutes after I got mm-hmm. in. No, because that was when you were stuffing your face with food. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Brain lapsed because of... Food. All right, that, that would explain that would explain why uh, Ingram didn't get credit for that. 
All right, so scoring. It was a combined shot. We'll just put it that way. Scoring in the first was Matt Donovan. He had, uh, his, that was his second with an assist from Illy Tolvin in his seventh, and Laurent Dauphin his ninth. Then, I like Laurent Dauphin. Good player. Then, um, I'm wait one second. Olivier scored his fifth with an assist from Matt Donovan, his 15th, and Frederick Allard, his 12th. And then at 17.29, Matt Donovan fought Evgeny Svechnikov, giving him a Gordie Howe hat trick. Which is a rare feat for any hockey player. You go get a fight, a goal, and an assist. Yeah, I was about to say to Gordie Howe, that's when you get a goal, a fight, and an assist in the same game. Correct. Made famous ball, obviously, by Gordie Howe. And then on the if power... If you don't know who Gordie Howe is, look him up. Hall of Fame hockey player. I recommend you looking him up. Um, uh, I'll, and then in the, and also in the second, on the power play, Can who... You put this way? I almost fell forward and we would have had to do the show over again. Oh, no. We'd have left it and everybody would have laughed at you. <laughs> I'd be swearing a lot because my laptop would have probably got broke. All right, so scoring on the power play, who else but Daniel Carr? He scored his 12th on the year with an assist from Frederick Gaudreau, his third, and Cole Schneider, his 18th. Yeah. Um, and then there was nothing in the third period. That was it. All admirals, all time. Another uh, victory. Three stars of the game were Matthew Olivier with one goal, uh, Troy Groshnik with 21 saves, and Matt Donovan with a Gordie Howe hat trick. Yeah. Attendance at the Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids was 9,123. Uh, referees were Tim Mayer and Sean Fernandez. Uh, linesman was Justin Cornell and Bob Marcus. Um, that now puts the Admirals 4-1 and one against Grand Rapids. Yeah, also, uh, Jared Tenardi and Colin Blackwell both got called up to Nashville before the game today. So, the Admiral's captain is currently in the Predators right now. I just figured I'd throw that out. Um, the Admirals are also currently on a three-game win streak. Huh, Admiral's on a winning streak. That sounds about right for this team. But yeah, tomorrow at six o'clock at the UW Panther Arena, you can watch the up. You can watch Game Two. It is back to back between the Predators and Admirals. Get your gold cowbell. Yeah, uh, they're giving away the uh, golden cowbell with the Admirals' uh, 50th anniversary logo on it. It's also Princess Night, so for all you little girls, you could uh, come to the game with your parents dressed up as your favorite princess. All right, so the Admirals are now at 51 points. Yeah, where do they rank in the entire league? I already know we got like a huge cushion against Iowa and Rockford. Ha, Rockford won tonight and they still dropped fifth. No, Rockford lost. They lost I Iowa. They lost. they lost Iowa. Oh, in fine. the entire league, the Admirals are in first place with 51 points. Then it is the Tucson Roadrunners with 46. See, we have a nice comfy lead there too. As far as the division goes, there's like a 21 point gap. No, no, it ain't that big, but seriously. It is pretty close. Yeah. Uh, the next closest team is the Iowa Wild at 38 points. Ouch. <laughs> okay, okay, I was pretty damn close. <laughs> the Admirals are on a 6 0 oh, 2 streak. Oh, uh, yeah, the Admirals are really good at hockey. And uh, now that we got Daniel Carr back, he's really good at hockey. But Admiral fans, uh, don't be surprised that the Predators call up more people because, uh, yeah, Nashville's having issues. Um, more in particularly, Dan Hamhuis and Colton Sissons. Uh, Sissons looks like he broke his leg. We'll keep you guys updated tomorrow once we And find out as far more. as uh, Ham Hughes goes, he took a puck to the face, so you don't know. You I you don't. It's not bad, but it could. It be could be jaw. as bad as a broken jaw. It could be as worse as a concussion. Yeah. So it's just one of those things you just don't know. 
All right, so it's I'm sure raining, it's raining poop in Nashville right now. All See, right, I'm trying to what on to our next thing. Oh, um, so I'm now we're gonna talk. And this is our first time ever covering one of these. Uh, so We're going to cover a hockey game. We've never done one of those before. Well, the, we've done that. We have never actually broke down in an entire Florida Everblades game. And we, since they are the Admiral's farm system, I think it's about time we start getting uh, familiar with their players. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get all familiar with it. That way, in the system is just in the system as far as junior players. No more talking about them. Today's the 28th, right? 27th. Oh, oh, oh. Don't pay attention to me. I'm an idiot. You just keep doing your thing. <laughs> you said it, not me. All right, so the Admirals have some giveaways coming up. Um, upcoming for the Admirals, we have Pat McCurdy performing in the Admirals Bar tomorrow night. It is a visit from the Princesses Got night. Um, Cowbell night. And then on January 10th, the Admirals will be wearing their homage to the 70s. It is a green Admirals jersey. They will also be giving away winter hats the next night, which is also 70s night. And they will be wearing these green jerseys again that they wore in the 70s. I'm going to have to check those out. And I'm sure they'll be auctioning them off to benefit the Power Play Foundation. As well as on the 11th, you will get a visit from... Uh, Rich Sorleus, Danny LaCour, Phil Whitliff, and Buzz Schneider, from also a member of the 1980 Olympic team, other known as Miracle. The Miracle on Ice, man. Yep. Um, also, an original Admiral, Barney Loomis, and Tony Scazafain. Uh, those guys will also be signing autographs. So, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I plan on checking it out. Um, it'll be nice to see Danny LaCour and Phil Whitliff again. All right, man. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Uh, all right. Shots on goal. Uh, Jacksonville Iceman 13, Florida Everblades 7 in the first period. In the second period, uh, Jacksonville out. Uh, Jacksonville had 10 shots. Uh, Florida had 16. Third period, uh, Florida had 11, and Jacksonville had 9. Uh, the Everblades outshot the Icemen 34-32. I'm not used to saying Florida, Jacksonville, Everblade, or Icemen, so bear with me, people. <laughs> yes, like he said, these are completely new teams to our uh, dictionary. Yes, we're just trying to pick up and, and branch out a little more. All right, have at it, bud. So, All right, scoring in the first was uh, Leaf Co. Culper with an assist from Joe Pedenza. Hey, I know that guy. I got his autograph. And uh, Pat McCarron. Um, and then in the, also in the first, we have Arvin Atwal. Hey, I know that guy. With an assist from Zach Magwood. Uh, no, it was a goal from equal. Oh, never mind. Yeah, you're right. Yep, I, I got it. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're in, I know who Atwal and Zach Magwood are. And uh, with another assist from Leafco Coper. Um, then in the second, scoring for the Jacksonville Iceman. Uh, was Bobby Lynch? Becky Lynch is rubbish. <laughs> you're waiting for that. Hit. You're waiting for that. With an assist from John Albert and Pierre Luc Merci. Um, then scoring, according to this, the game-winning goal, um, Logan Rowe was an assist from Nick Schaus at John McCarron. Wait, how is it the game winner? Because if they only scored two and. That was the third goal for Florida. So it would technically still be the game winner. That was the first for Florida. No, that's the third. Logan Rowe with an assist from Nick Schaus and McCarron was the third goal. I'm in the second period already. Yeah, it's confusing. Um, that's just the way that they have this set up. Yeah, but they get two more goals. So how is that one? Oh, that's been called an insurance call. Okay. Yes. Um, then scoring in uh, for the Jacksonville Iceman, former Admiral Emerson Clark, with an assist from Dion Mingo and Chase Lang. Then might be Dijon. Kind of like Dijon, the lead singer of Seven Day. Uh, Possible if you want to pronounce it like that. 
Um, and then scoring for the Everblades is Hugo Wah. I know that guy. And John McCarron and Adam Smith. Dude, this McCarron kid's getting a bunch of assists. Then scoring in the second is Arvid Atwal with an assist from John McCarron and Michael Neville. And then in the third on the power play, Cam McLeese with an assist from John McCarron and Blake Winicki. All right, McCarron at one, two, three, four. Yeah, he had uh, five points tonight. Let's see, one. Two, he had an assist in. He had three, five assists. Because he had an assist on that first goal, too. Five. So, yeah, he had five. Yeah, Patrick McCann. Yeah. Wait. All right, in that for the Everblade. Wait, so the Patrick in it, John McCann? Yeah. All right, never mind. He only had four in it, John McCann. All right, in net for the Everblades was Ken Appleby. He had 30 saves on 32 shots. Um, in net for the Jacksonville Iceman is Adam Carlson. I'm familiar with him. Uh, he stopped 28 of... 34? Um. I mean, now you want to set me up. Did he talk about the goalies yet? Yeah. For the Everblades? Mm hmm. Uh, so you already did the McCollum and Appleby thing? Yeah. Yep, you missed it. Yeah. Too late. Alright, um. Up next. For waiting on it to load. While we're doing that, I can get back to this. Yeah, keep talking about that stuff. Uh, the uh, Admirals are giving away more promotions even after that. Wednesday, January 15th, you will get a lens cloth from the Admirals with an Admirals 50 logo on them while supply lasts. Um, it's to the first 2,000 fans. Um, and then the thing I'm most looking forward to in the month of January, uh, Skillet is performing after the after the Admirals game on January 24th. Um, and that is for the month of January. Um, I will be doing these after every game for the month of January so that people know what promotions are coming up. And we're still waiting here. Yeah. It's so new to us that even our computers are not recognizing ECHL.com. Actually, I think ECHL.com is just slow. That too. All right, so they do play tomorrow uh, against the Jacksonville Iceman again at 6 o'clock. So same time, same place. So, yeah, we'll probably end up same. covering that game tomorrow. Yep, so we'll have another game for you guys. Like I said, anytime the Florida Everblades play, and we play, we will be getting in, uh, uh, getting their games in so that we can talk about the players. Yeah. Um, so uh, this has been From Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by Hockey Locker. 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can give them a call at 414-800-7585. Get all your hockey needs. Um, or you, you can visit, visit him at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. I know, he looked at me confused. <laughs> and I thought you weren't trying to give out their phone number. <laughs> For shame. All right, so uh, promote, promote, promote some more, man. We're walking billboards for these guys. Dave speaking Lightfoot. of walking billboards, we're about to be a walking billboard for us in the next couple days. Yeah, I know. I'm looking forward to that hoodie. Yeah, me too. No, it's not from Milwaukee to Nashville hoodie. It's a not yet. Of a race car we're sponsored. Yep. Our and, names are on it, though. Yep, and if you want one, hit me up. Um, I'm pretty sure I can figure out a way to get you guys one. So this has been From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel. This is Chris, and we will see you see guys you tomorrow. tomorrow. Come out to the Panther Arena. Spend money. Yes. In the team store. That